Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month January 2022. Now before I begin, I just want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for signing up to this community. And I also wanted to say everyone is welcome to sign up to the newsletter. So I've got a free quarterly newsletter. I send it out every quarter. And what I do there is I basically take a look at the astrology for the quarter ahead. But this time on the 1st of January, I am going to do an overview for the entire year ahead for every single sign. So you definitely don't wanna miss that. All you have to do is go on the home page, you scroll down to the bottom and at the bottom there's a panel and you just put in your email address. You don't have to put your name or any of that, just your email address and confirm it and then you're signed up and you will receive on the 1st of January this incredible outlook which I've spent quite a bit of time putting together over the last couple of weeks. So I've been working on that. I've also been working on materials for the shop. Many of you have asked me questions like, you know, how do I improve my intuition? Uh, would you give us guidance on that? Some of you have asked, how do you read a chart? Could you teach me? Could you teach me your way of reading a chart? Absolutely. I'm really excited to do this. And what I've been doing over the last few weeks, now you would have noticed that I haven't been posting very much on social media. I haven't been doing many astro chats. I haven't been doing so much on Instagram. What I have been doing is I've been busy putting together these tutorials and study guides. And those will be available on my website, on my shop. It's going to be really affordable. Uh, you know, you'll just have to pay a small amount. Like I'm kind of looking 10 to 15 pounds, something like that, but kind of, you know, the cost of a movie ticket kind of thing. Um, and you'll be able to download these materials. And I've decided to do it this way, as opposed to using a platform or something like that, where you have to pay you know, a monthly subscription and you have to have a login and all this kind of thing. I didn't want all of that. I wanted you to have something where you could just purchase the materials, download them to your hard drive. And that way, whether the internet is on or off, it doesn't matter. You can still be using your materials and you can still be, you know, learning and accessing the guidance that'll be in there. So I've been busy working on that. And the other thing I wanted to make mention of, so that'll be coming. When will that be coming? Maybe in the next two to three months. So I'm, I'm busy working on that every day. The other thing I wanted to make mention of is that we are having t-shirt weather here in Sydney, Australia. You can see I'm wearing my Lord Shiva t-shirt, which I will show you. So finally, we have got warm weather, as you can see. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Well, you can kind of see it. <laughs> Finally, we have got warm weather that I can wear my Lord Shiva t-shirt, which I designed and it's on my t-shirt shop. I'll, I'll show you where that is. And you're very welcome to go and make a purchase there if you would like to. You don't have to, but you can go and check it out if you want to. The reason I'm bringing this up is because A, we've got weather that's warm enough that I can finally wear a t-shirt and B I logged on to the t-shirt shop yesterday and I hadn't been there for like 10 months or so I just kind of I'd kind of given up on it because when I was logging on in 2020 every couple of months I'd log on there and there were only two sales there's one by me and one by Christina hello Christina if you're watching um, they were just two sales for the longest time and so I didn't bother logging on because I thought oh no one really wants t-shirts and I was thinking of cancelling it or you know taking the whole thing down and then yesterday I logged on I couldn't believe it there are all these sales on there and I was like wow this is amazing so I'm gonna keep it and in fact I'm possibly gonna put some more items in there next year if I find some spare time to you know sit down and do a bit of designing or something like that, then I certainly will put some more items on the t-shirt shop at some point. So thank you to those of you who have bought something. You're very welcome in the comments below to let me know how you, you know, whether you liked 
the design or how it is. I'd love to know how you liked your item. So yeah, thank you so much to all those of you who have, you know, either booked a reading or bought something from the shop or those of you who put a like and who put a comment. Honestly, you guys are just so special to me. Thank you so much to everybody who has contributed to the channel. This is something I love doing so much and I feel so lucky I get to do this. And I want to thank everybody who's ever supported me. You know, in, in whatever way you have, even just dropping a like is incredible. So thank you with all my heart to, to all those of you who uh, make this such a cool place to be. All right, why don't we get into the outlook for 2022? Before I do that, I do want to make note about some of the recent news actually that's happened in the Philippines. Uh, I just saw today one of the headlines talk about a typhoon there in the Philippines. And I just wanted to say that if we've got any viewers in the Philippines or any of you have family, uh, friends and family in the Philippines, you know, my heart goes out to you, uh, my prayers as well. I hope everyone is okay out there. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you are there and you know you, you want to tell us how things are but definitely thoughts and prayers are with anybody who's in that part of the world at this time. Okay let's take a look at 2022. So on the channel before I have said that 2022 is definitely going to be all about healing and I think there are two big themes. One is healing for sure and the other theme is going to be that we are going to be coming together more and more in the spirit of community. Okay, Community is a theme that is massively on the rise and we're going to see this theme of community, of humanity, of people coming together. We're going to see this theme really rise and crescendo in 2023 okay 2023 is when Saturn is going to move into Aquarius and life will very much be about coming together about all of us wanting to be together in person you know we don't want to keep living our lives through screens we don't want to keep doing zoom calls and all this kind of thing it's just too crazy right we want to be together you know, and I think that feeling is going to massively increase across 2022. And that's in preparation for when Saturn shifts into Aquarius, which is 2023. Okay, early 2023, we're going to have quite a shift. And I think the chaos and the madness that has been going on in our world since Jan, Feb 2020, which is when Saturn went into Capricorn, I do think we're going to see that come to an end when Saturn leaves Aquarius. So we're looking at, I think it's 2025, somewhere there. But 2022 is going to be all about getting us ready for Saturn in Aquarius, which is very much about community. Also, we're going to see the spotlight shift from leadership. Currently, it's on leadership and it will be until, so right through 2022. The focus will still be on leaders and it will still be on the elite and it will still be on you know what they are up to but when Saturn moves into Aquarius the spotlight will be on us it will be very much on us it will be on what are we doing how are we coming together how are we winning how are we creating the future that we want to live and that we want to see that is going to be all important so in 2022 astrologically we've got some really big events and I'm just going to run through what those are in brief. So in March we've got Rahu Ketu Axis is going to shift into Aries Libra. So it's going to shift from Taurus Scorpio and it's going to be in Aries Libra. So that's quite interesting. We're going to have Rahu in Aries. right? So that's very much about the individual and it's very much about leadership 
And doesn't that sound quite a little bit like Aquarius? Okay, so you'll see that all that's happening in 2022 is really preparing us for Saturn in Aquarius in 2023. So this Rahu Ketu axis shift is here to support that. Okay, we've also got uh, Kal Sarpa Yoga that's going to end 24th April. Okay, so April is quite significant as well. We've also got Neptune and Jupiter. They're going to shift into Pisces in April. April is very significant. March is very significant. April is very significant too. We have tension between Mars, Saturn and Uranus in both March and August of 2022. So March could get quite tense and August could be quite tense as well. Okay, there could be tension, difficulties, stuck points. Uranus could cause sudden changes there. So these could be tense times, March and August 2022. And then at the end of the year, from November to January 2023, we're going to have Mars retrograde in Taurus. So that's going to be really interesting too. And that could be very significant when it comes to the money markets. Okay, Mars retrograde in Taurus. Uh, that's huge. That could be a time where money is very much in focus, where money is being reworked or the systems around money are being reworked or changed or something like that. That could be really huge. So that's something that I will explore into and we'll talk about that closer to the time. But just by looking at these movements, these big broad brushstroke movements of what's happening here, especially things like Rahu Ketu axis shift into Aries and Libra, okay, Rahu being in uh, Aries there, very much about the individual, okay, so that's got an Aquarian kind of feel there. I know it's Aries, but uh, Aquarians can be quite strong leaders too. And we've also got Neptune, Jupiter shift into Pisces in April. To me, that shift in April is very much about people coming together. Okay, and that coming together. So we're, we've gone from being finely atomized, right? Neptune in Aquarius. Now Neptune and Jupiter are going to shift into Pisces. This is going to be about everybody coming together, all those little droplets coming back together to form water again. Okay, so... That's going to be amazing and that's April onwards. So look at that. That's quite Aquarian there too. People coming together, people grouping together. So we can see that all the planets are really, are really helping us this year. If we can just stay in tune with nature, if we can be in the now, if we can be more heart centered, these are going to be really good things for us. In 2022. Yep, I've got the note here practice run for the big shift that's coming in early 2023. So a lot is being prepared. Now let's take a look at the month of January 2022. What do we have? What's the big news? And what will I be covering in the mini reports? Well, we are really going to take a look at Venus being in retrograde, and we're also going to take a look at Mercury being in retrograde. This is the big news. And this is good. I think these are good things. This is a nice start to the year, an interesting start to the year with two retrogrades. We've got Venus retrograde from the start of the month all the way through to 29 January. So the whole month is taken up by Venus in retrograde. It's quite amazing. And this will place an emphasis on relationships. Okay, so when Venus is in retrograde, she is closer to the Earth. She's more powerful and so things that are to do with Venus come more into focus so yes that is relationships but it's also self-worth it's also our relationship with ourself how we feel about ourselves now as this is happening in Sagittarius this is going to be about our beliefs in relationships so in the mini reports, I'll definitely be talking more about that. But it's, it's really interesting what we do believe in regards to relationships. You know, I've got three examples on my screen here. Do you believe 
relationships mirror our core beliefs something to contemplate do you believe if we make a change in ourselves that our outer relationships must reflect that and do you believe if we do our inner work our relationships will definitely heal or transform okay or do you believe that this is all just a load of spiritual mumbo jumbo and that this doesn't mean anything at all right what do you really believe you know maybe and it's really interesting with spirituality because sometimes people like to take it in they just like to watch the videos and learn and but it but then people don't make the changes people don't do the actual work people don't you know sit and journal and contemplate or meditate or you know make any real changes you know people like to watch the content sometimes but then they don't actually make the changes and i think this is going to be a time while venus is in retrograde where you can really make some changes okay so it's not just about listening to the lectures and you know agreeing or enjoying the content because because yeah spiritual content it can be like you know it can just be entertainment sometimes we just we just take it in because it's so enjoyable to listen to and relaxing and soothing but do we do anything with it see doing that's a mars thing this is interesting isn't it mars is going to be so it's really interesting because venus as she retrogrades mars is coming closer to her as i was looking on the transit wheel it's really beautiful to watch because she's retrograding in sagittarius he's coming closer and then as soon as she goes forward again they kind of come together and it's really lovely actually it's like you know mars kind of offers his arm and, and she takes it and they walk off together it's, it looks really quite beautiful that's what i was seeing anyway as i was looking at the transit wheel but look at that mars energy is coming towards venus so i i definitely think this is a good time to be reviewing what you think about relationships and then to be actively doing something about it especially mars is going to come and hold venus by the hand and, and walk her some journey into feb i think they will be together so that doing energy is going to be there you know this could be the month really to be contemplating what you really feel and believe about relationships and then feb i think would be a great month to do something about it to actually make some changes to actually you know change your inner world so that you will attract and bring back relationships to you that really work in the real world i think that would be amazing so that's venus retrograde and then we've also got mercury retrograde so mercury will be in retrograde from 15 january onwards until about 5 feb okay so this is going to be in capricorn saturn is also in the house right so saturn is here pluto's there i mean capricorn we all know that there's a huge amount of work being done there and a lot of this is collective so i do think that this mercury retrograde is going to have a collective impact i think the venus retrograde will be lovely for our individual selves to contemplate relationships and what they mean to us and all that but i think with mercury i think there is going to be an impact on the collective and i think it's going to be around things like rules i think rules are going to be revised and we might see that there's quite a bit of backtracking you know leaders will say well we're doing this but then two days later we're doing that you know it's i think there's going to be revisions and backtracking and um this is all in square to uranus so it wouldn't surprise me if you know rules are reinvented overnight policies change day by day you know okay one day we're doing this okay next day we're doing that you know across this entire period of 15 jan to 5 feb so that's really something to look out for there but in the mini breakdowns i will be talking about how the mercury retrograde impact uh, how the mercury retrograde is going to impact you personally i am going to be going through that so i think we're at that point right now 
Uh, let's take a look at the time. Yeah, we are doing good on time. Okay, why don't we get in? So Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now all month we have Venus retrograde in your ninth house. So this is a time to review what you really believe about love and relationships. Okay, now the Lord of this ninth house of yours is Jupiter and Jupiter is transiting 11th house Aquarius. Okay, so I believe this is going to be a good time to create more equality in your relationships. So when it comes to love and relationships, it would be really good if you could focus on equality. Okay, we all want equality and where are we where are we receiving equality where where you know you will have some relationships that are very equal and lovely but there will be some relationships that are out of balance okay so acknowledge where it's going well so that also gives you encouragement then you'll be able to do something perhaps to correct the relationships that are out of balance because you can see that well of course I'm capable of doing that I, I've done that successfully here and here but in this relationship where I'm not doing it okay let me see what can I do to correct the balance so that could definitely be something that you take a look at this month now Mercury will be retrograde from 15th January in your 10th house so this is to do with your work this could be a good time to just be a little bit more, well, build some buffer time into your working life if you can. So this is not a month to rush anything or you know, it may not be the month to start new things as well uh, when it comes to work or work projects, but this would be a good time to build in extra time, to build in buffer time, to recognize, okay, I better get a start on that now as opposed to later, right? I think this is the kind of thing because you may not be able to anticipate uh, some of the things that a retrograde can bring up. With a retrograde, Mercury retrograde especially, it's just good to have time on your side. Okay, that would be a really good thing. And this could also be a good time for you to get on top of any work-related admin, perhaps that you have been neglecting or something's piling up. Something's piling up on your desk and you're like, oh, I need to take care of my expenses or whatever it is, right? If there's something like that, try and get it done. Uh, 15 January onwards, it would be a great time for you to get on top of any admin type things like that. Okay, so we have a new moon on the 3rd of January and this is happening in Sagittarius Purvashada Nakshatra in your ninth house. So this is a really great time to plant a seed. We have a new moon here so you can wish for something and for you, since this is happening in your ninth house, you can wish for leadership. Right? You can wish for a step up, you can wish to be seen, you can wish to move forward in your career, that that progression be accelerated if possible. Okay, Good time to wish for that. It's also a good time to direct your talents in a more focused way to achieve big things this year. Now there's a full moon happening on the 18th of January. Hi Aries, sorry about that. The memory card filled up and I had to start again. So we have a full moon on the 18th of January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra, which is happening in your fourth house. So this is a really beautiful full moon. This will be a time where you can nourish yourself, you can luxuriate, you can relax. This is comfort food, TV, be in your pajamas all day if you can. It's that kind of time if you need <clears throat> a day where you really pamper yourself if that's something that you need then the 18th of January this will be a good time to do that and of course you can do that if it's I think it's a weekday so you can do it in the weekend before or the weekend after 
you know, just make sure you get a day to yourself where you can truly rest and recharge. That's going to be important this month. All right, Aries. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, all month we've got Venus in retrograde. And for you, that's going to be in your eighth house. So this is a time to review what you really believe about relationships. Now, the Lord of your eighth house is Jupiter. And Jupiter is transiting 10th house Aquarius. <clears throat> so this could be a good time to review your relationships at work. This could also be a really good time to review your relationship with work. You know, is it a good relationship? Is it one that needs change in some aspect? You know, because ideally we love what we do. And ideally you recognize that you're on some kind of stepping stone, but that you are gradually moving towards what it is that you really want to be doing. <clears throat> so. As we have the eighth house in focus as well, you could be reviewing family relationships, uh, relationship with your married partner, the person you're married to, and or shared assets as well. So all these things could be in focus at this time. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice, guys. It's just gone a little bit crazy all of a sudden. I'll keep going though. Uh, now Mercury is going to be retrograde from 15th January in your ninth house. So when it comes to work, you might want to build in extra time. Okay, this is not really a month to be rushing anything, especially when it comes to decision making, you're going to want to build in some buffer time <coughs> around your decision making. <coughs> so this is not the ideal month, as I said, to initiate anything new work wise. Now on the 3rd of January, we have a beautiful new moon. This is happening in Sagittarius, Purva, Ashada, Nakshatra. And for you, this is happening in your eighth house. So this is a great time to plant a seed regarding things you'd like to do with your partner or with family. And <coughs> this is a great time to plant this seed regarding, say for example, you want to travel with your partner or you want to be reunited with your family, something to do as well with travel and family and your partner. This could be uh, a really good time on the 3rd of January <coughs> to, my goodness, I'm so sorry, Taurus. This, as soon as I started your one, <coughs> this is, um, my voice has really gone crazy. So I wonder if there's any, chakra clearing, fifth chakra clearing that any Taurians need to do. Is that the case? Do we have any of that going on? Do you know what? I'm actually feeling a little bit inspired to draw a card. Why don't we do it? Why don't we see what's going on Taurus? I haven't done this. I did this last time actually for cancer and um, I haven't done this for you guys, have I? So let's have a look and see if there's anything <clears throat> to do with these because um, I've had to stop and start this video <clears throat> several times at the Torian part. So why don't we have a look? I'm being nosy. I want to see what this is. Is there any guidance here for what this is? I'll also take a sip of water. Oh, why don't we take that one? Well, it's just, okay, we've got the world. This is good. <clears throat> All right, well, no, nothing of concern. You've got the um, Two of Pentacles. So you might be going back and forth on something. You're planning. You're looking ahead to the future. Okay, Three of Wands. And there's a cycle is going to complete for you, uh, Taurus. There is, okay, there might be, the, the voice problem might be a little something to do with, with this Ten of Swords here. So... <coughs> Maybe someone does need to speak up here. I don't know what this is. But I feel like this is, this is ending. This Ten of Swords is over because this was the card that was on top. This was on the bottom of the deck. And I feel like your happiness is uh, not very far away at all. It's, it's within reach. So 
Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting anything that's not good here, Taurus. <coughs> I think you just need to speak up. Somebody here needs to speak up. There's something like that going on. I'll see if this carries over into Gemini, but and I think I finished. Did we did we talk about the full moon here? No, we didn't. Full moon, 18th January. <coughs> Look at this, this is amazing. Full moon, 18th January in Cancer, Pushya Nakshatra in your third house. This is an excellent full moon to share the fullness of your feelings with someone. Okay, so you'll have the confidence. Right, I feel like someone needs to speak up here, Taurus. So if that's you, then I'm wishing you well. Yeah, and I can feel my voice getting better. All right, well, let, I'll keep it in here. I'll keep it recorded. I'll, I won't take it out. I'll leave it. Taurus, I think you're going to have a good month. All right, <clears throat> just speak up. Yeah, it's all better now. How bizarre, because I was all right. In, in Aries, it was starting to falter a little bit. And it, I think it's your energy, Taurus. Someone needs to speak up here. That's, that's what I know for sure. And look, it's all better now. Yeah, I'll be able to fly through the rest of them. Well, Taurus, I'm excited for you. You've got, you've got the world here. You've got, you've got a, a major cycle completing. I think all you have to do is just speak up. That's all. And have the confidence and the courage to do so. That full moon, 18 January, that's going to be a good time for you to speak. All right, so I'm wishing you all the best, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, all month, Venus is going to be retrograde in your seventh house. Now, this is a time to review what you really believe about love and relationships. Lord of the seventh house, Jupiter, is going to be transiting ninth house Aquarius. So I really wanted to take a look at the two counselors and see, okay, how are they interacting together? And as we see here, we've got Jupiter transiting the ninth house Aquarius. This would be a good time to review the relationship you have with your father, okay, or with authority figures. What's your relationship like with authority figures? Even your boss at work, Okay, or the bosses that you've had over the course of your life. This could be a really good time just to explore that dynamic, think about that dynamic, journal about that dynamic. We have the seventh house in focus here. So you are also reviewing your marriage partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You know, I do look at long-term relationships. Anyone that you're really committed to, that you've made a solid commitment to, I read them from the seventh house. Dating, of course, the fifth, but the seventh as well. So this is a good time to be looking at love, Gemini. Now, Mercury will be retrograde from 15th January in your eighth house. So Mercury transits really well here. So this could be good for making money. This could be a good time to grow your wealth even, um, but definitely take care at this time and build in extra time when you're making decisions around money. If you are reviewing any shared assets, this is a good time to just, to well, firstly to do that, but if you have to make any adjustments or any of that, build in extra time, be extra careful, be very thorough. You know, we've got Saturn here as well. This could also be a good time just to get on top of any admin that's been building up around shared assets. You know, maybe there's a stack of, I don't know, pay payments or something that you have to deal with and that's been building up. This is a really good time to get on top of any administrative matters that you haven't had any time to deal with. You're going to get a chance and an opportunity to get on top of all that stuff. Now, there's a new moon happening on the 3rd of January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada. That's happening in your seventh house. So this is a perfect time to wish for a massive healing in your heart. Uh, you can wish for a massive healing in your marriage in your love life, in your relationships for the entire year. Guys, we are starting this new year with a new moon. So I'm saying to everybody, wish for something that's 
going to stretch across the entire year. This is a really good time to do that. And for you, this being in your seventh house, it's a great time to wish for the healing of heartbreak or to wish for something wonderful for your partner. You could also do that as well. You know, maybe, maybe they need a boost or a pick me up or, you know, maybe they need a change of job or, or they need something to brighten their world. You can wish for them at this time as well. We've got a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra. So this is happening for you in your second house. So this is an excellent full moon to be with family, uh, to reflect on what family means to you. And, you know, perhaps you're yet to meet your soul tribe. Perhaps you're yet to meet the people that you would choose to be your family. You know, the people that you want to consider family. So this is a really good time to reflect on all these things, on, you know, what your family of origin has been like versus the family or families that you want to create. You know, we create a family through our work, through our friendship circles. You know, if you're yet to meet that special someone and, and get married, you know, who, who do you want that person to be? What do you want them to be like? So that full moon on the 18th of January, that's a really good time to contemplate that Gemini. So thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, all month, Venus is in retrograde in your sixth house. So this is a time to review what you really believe about relationships, okay? This is Venus. So it's about relationships. It's about love. It's about self-worth. It's about how we feel about ourselves. And for you, this is happening in your sixth house. So when we look at the Lord of this sixth house, that is Jupiter. And Jupiter is transiting eighth house Aquarius. So what I'm going to say specifically is that you can review your relationship with the person that you're married to. And you can also review your relationship with money as well. Okay, this is a really good time to be doing that. We've got shared assets in the eighth house so we've also got money right shared assets other people's money so this is a good time to review both of these things yeah who you're married to uh, and or your relationship with money now mercury will be retrograde from 15th january in your seventh house so this is a great time to yeah again review your relationship with money uh, because the seventh house there can be, especially if you're a small business person or maybe you're a person who has a public, you, you deal with other people, but the seventh house, is it's the marketplace, right? There's a lot of money going in and out there and this is also things like foreign exchange. There's all kinds of things that happen here. So money's going to be in focus for you, Cancer. I remember, I think was it last time, I drew cards for you. This time I had to draw cards for Taurus. Isn't that incredible? And my voice is just about come to normal now. Oh gosh, I was in Taurus and I was like, I couldn't stop coughing. It was incredible. But um, I remember you last time, Cancer. I drew cards for you. I don't need to do that for you this time. The thing about money, though, I, as I was going through the notes this time, was... I'm going to put a couple of links below to a guy called Stuart Wilde and definitely check him out because he's got some wonderful videos about money and you know how to attract abundance, create wealth, all that kind of thing. So I'll put a couple of links to him below and this is a really good time to be introduced to a new guru okay? because Venus is in retrograde and she's one of the counsellors. So definitely spend some time with Stuart Wilde if you are on the lookout for a new guru. I really like him. I love his voice as well. He's, he's really, really good to listen to. So there's a new moon on 3rd of January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada in your sixth house. So new moon, great time to set uh, an intention or to plant a seed for something new. Now, because we're having this new moon at the start of the year, this is a really excellent time to wish for something for the entire year. So 
ideally all of this happening in your sixth house you can set an intention to serve and compete with excellence okay and I'm going to give you the link to Stuart Wilde below that you'll be able to watch and yeah he's gonna he's gonna teach you all about money and serving with excellence and all that kind of thing uh, now we've got a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushan Nakshatra, your first house. This is your full moon. And I can see the camera battery flashing there. I hope it doesn't cut out. But well, let's keep going here. So this is your full moon, Cancer. This is a really great time to reflect on how far you have come in life, okay? And specifically, uh, focus on where you have had a head start in your life as well. If you look around in your life you'll be able to see that you've actually got a head start in possibly many things okay and if you see that and acknowledge that that's important because very often we only look at where we are behind but we don't look at where we are ahead and where time is on our side so look for that on this full moon sorry about that cancer the camera got cut but I think I was just finishing off with you anyway. I was talking about the fact that look at the places where you've had a head start in life and really reflect on that uh, during that full moon, 18th January. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now, all month, Venus is in retrograde in your fifth house. All right, so this is a time to review what you really believe about love and relationships and of course self-worth, anything to do with Venus. So now the Lord of your fifth house is Jupiter and Jupiter is transiting seventh house Aquarius. So this very much is, yeah, look at that, this is beautiful. This is very much all about love, romance, who you're married to, what it means to be in love, what it means to be you know, swept up into those beautiful heady feelings, but then also what it is to keep your feet on the ground and you have to live a day-to-day -day life as well. You have to do both, right? So this is also a good time to reflect on self-love as well. Not everybody is in a relationship and if you're not in a relationship, it's a good time to be looking after you, you know, you have to look after yourself and Self-love is, is really important. Self-love is also important when you're in a relationship as well. Very often when you get into a relationship, you just completely focus everything on the other person. You forget yourself, you know. Um, so yeah, whether you're single or with somebody, self-love is important. So I've also got the note here, this is not the best time to approach someone new. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think it um, could be a time where someone from your past comes back in. That's very possible, Leo, uh, especially for you. So yeah, if, if someone, perhaps it didn't work out or you maybe you never even got to try or whatever it is, maybe that person, maybe something will happen here or you're getting ready for something to happen with that person, who knows. So Mercury is going to be in retrograde from 15th January in your sixth house. So this is a great time to review your relationship with competitors and what it means to serve others. Okay, um, Mercury is really very effective here. So this is a good transit. You might be able to win more clients or be seen or succeed or perform really well. So that's really good. Now there's a new moon, 3rd January, in Sagittarius, Purva Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So because this new moon is happening at the very start of the year, this is a great time to wish for your heart to heal totally for this whole year. You know, that you, you have a healed heart, you know, um, and that you feel fantastic. And I've also got the note here, you can also wish for being a good leader in love. And what do I mean by this? Well, when you're in a relationship, leadership, I do believe, changes hands because sometimes one of you is really strong and the other one, you know, may not be so strong or, or whatever it is. And then sometimes it changes hands. The other one becomes very strong and is, is kind of leading the way more. And the other one you know like this leadership I do believe it, it kind of changes hands and 
the idea is that when you're the leader um, in your relationship that you wish that you be a good leader you know if that can be your wish on this new moon third January new moon that would be really beautiful Leo so yeah wish to be a good leader in love uh, there's a full moon happening on the 18th of January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra that's happening for you in your 12th house again this is oh this is so beautiful a beautiful full moon to enjoy and indulge in fantasy thinking yes this is great dream dream big dream of what your heart would really want you know what does it mean to be like madly in love Leo this is your time to uh, be looking at that I've got the note here what wonders do you dream of in your love life you know great time for artists to be making some beautiful art at this time as well so Leo wow I'm super excited for you you've got this is the month for you Leo I mean of all the signs everyone else is yes they're dealing with love but not, not quite in the way that you are you've, you've got the the um, the heady beautiful dreamy stuff going on here so good on you Leo enjoy that and we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now all month Venus is retrograde in your fourth house so this is a time to review what you really believe when it comes to relationships but you know can we narrow this down and yes we can so the Lord of your fourth house Jupiter is transiting sixth house Aquarius so this is about reviewing your relationships in your family okay your relationships at home um, also relationships with competitors your clients as well how you serve who you serve uh, through your work so all these things are in focus during this month now mercury will be retrograde from 15th January in your fifth house so this is a great time to review your creative process from a nuts and bolts perspective okay are you organized Virgo are you ready for when inspiration hits you know uh, and if you're some kind of artist you know are your brushes clean or what else like maybe you make jewelry or something like that are your tools organized are you ready to go so that when you get that idea you can just sit down and, and make stuff happen maybe you've got to clutter clear a room or get organized or there's something around yeah and this is to do with home as well fourth house of home this. this is a really good time to be clutter clearing to be getting organized to be making your life in such a way that when the idea comes boom you can publish it maybe maybe it's making a video maybe it's um, getting your SLR out and taking the photo and putting it on Instagram are you organized and ready to go right do you keep your um, SD cards clean and are your batteries charged and all this type of thing so there is a new moon happening 3rd January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra and this is in your fourth house so great time to set an intention or wish for um, perhaps some change to your home maybe a renovation or an extension or you want to get something new or maybe you want a new home maybe you want to dream big about that beautiful gorgeous home that you want to achieve in 10 years time you can plant that seed now okay so that's new moon 3rd January uh, your fourth house you can plant a seed for that glorious beautiful new home that you wish for okay now full moon is happening 18th January and that's in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra in your 11th house so this is a beautiful full moon for socializing so if you're able to socialize if you're able to have a party go out be with people um, this would be a really nice time to do that or this could just be a time where you reflect on your friends network this could be a time where perhaps you are catching up with like-minded friends and, and perhaps recognizing and realizing how your friendship circles have changed how your network circles have changed you know I'm discovering that myself like over these last couple of years it's like wow there are certain people that you know they're, they're kind of not my people anymore and um, yeah, I just have to recognize that and, and realize that 
this has been a big time for everybody and it has changed things quite a lot so this could be a time where you're you're just acknowledging that or perhaps you're chatting with someone who's like-minded about that very thing so all up Virgo it's looking like a really good month for you so I'm wishing you well and we are now going to meet Libra Libra thank you so much for joining now all month Venus is in retrograde in your third house so when Venus is in retrograde we're really looking at relationships and can we get a little bit more specific yes we can we can do this by looking at the Lord of the third house which is Jupiter and Jupiter is transiting your fifth house okay fifth house Aquarius so this is about reviewing your confidence in relationships this is about reviewing your confidence especially I would say on the dating scene you know when you're out dating are you confident um, and when you're in relationships are you able to ask for what you need or do you use kind of roundabout ways to try and get your needs met right the ideal thing is that we have courage and we just say we just say look you know I love you so much but you know it's, I don't know I, I can't even think of an example right now let's think of an example asking for your needs to be met it is something around that it's 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 and it, it's just about being direct just about being open honest direct uh, I've got the note here how fearless are you in love it's a big question and something that you could be exploring this month perhaps through your meditations or journaling now mercury will be retrograde from 15th january in your fourth house so this is a great time to review any administrative matters to do with your home this is also about getting organized at home or getting your home organized or just organizing things better arranging things better at home uh, perhaps this is a really good time to do some spring cleaning I know I need to do some of that myself so yep that's a really good time now there's a new moon 3rd January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra this is happening in your third house so this is a really great time to wish for the courage to be totally fearless this year that's a big ask isn't it but you can wish for whatever you want and why not wish for that I think that's a great thing to wish for and because we're having a new moon at the very start of the year I'm saying wish for something for the entire year so wish for an entire year of being fearless and especially in relationships that would be an amazing thing to wish for now there's a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra and that's happening in your 10th house so this is a great full moon to reflect on where you are in your career hopefully some big project will culminate and complete at this time and it's so amazing when I've observed full moons I have noticed many projects I do complete at that time it's quite incredible um, now this is not the best time 18th January to be starting any new work projects but definitely to be looking at your life and seeing what is completing when it comes to your work so Libra thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now all month we have Venus in retrograde and for you this is happening in your second house and this is all about relationships it's all about love but where specifically so if we take a look at your second house the Lord of this house is Jupiter and Jupiter is transiting fourth house Aquarius so for you this is going to be about reviewing love in your family relationships what does love mean at home uh, what does it mean to love your mum or what does it mean to be a mother to other people what does it mean to give your mothering energy to people and let's say for example you know um, you, ha you haven't had contact with your mum for a really long time well how in the world do you receive that kind of mothering energy this could be something to become aware of or to become conscious of I always say to people that Gaia Mother Earth she's everybody's mother you know she's she's the first original mother do you have a relationship with her you know so if you don't have 
too much of a relationship with your with your mother that's okay there are many mothers you know uh, there's mother mary you know there, there are so many mothers that are ready straight away to give that beautiful nourishing motherly energy so where do you receive that from that could be something to look at let's have a look here so mercury is going to be retrograde from 15th January in your third house. So this is a great time to review in a logical way anything that blocks your mind or anything that blocks your effort. You know, when you want to do something, when you want to get something done, are there any blocks? Are there delays? You know, perhaps you feel the enormous pressure of, oh, I've got so much to do, but yet when it comes to actually doing it, what are the invisible things that are that are stopping you? I've got the note here, be logical, not emotional, and remove things that drain your time. Yeah, this is really about looking critically and logically at your life and finding the places where you can buy yourself some time. I know Ali Abdal is really great at doing that. I always talk about him. He's so amazing. I used to watch him before he became like a millionaire. And I mean that both in terms of subscribers and money. So I used to watch him when he was just like, I think he had tens of thousands of subscribers or something like that. I was with him then. And he always had these wonderful ways of showing how to get more time in the day to get more stuff done. So I'm kind of seeing that that's going to be important for you with this Mercury retrograde period. To be looking at your life and seeing, okay, where can I get more time? Um, now there's a new moon happening, 3rd January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your second house. So this is a time where you can wish for something. You can wish for, to you know, plant a seed at this time. So you can wish for the best energy to support you and your family this year. This is a wish around your family, okay? What would you wish for that could really improve the life of your whole family? Is there one thing that you could wish for that would just be so amazing? Yeah, you know, maybe you wanna wish that you all come together. Maybe you wanna wish that you all get to see each other in person, you know, it could be something like that. So this is a good time to wish for that. Now there's a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra in your ninth house. So this is a beautiful full moon to see how far you've come on your own steam. You know, where have you taken charge in life and where have you won? Okay, and if you look for that, you will find it. If you look into your past and see, you know, what have I achieved? What have I done all by myself? You know, what have I done that's just been me that's just been that you know if I didn't do it then that amazing thing wouldn't exist right where can you take some some personal credit you know Scorpio this is, this is a good time to do that just internally right you don't need to <laughs> you know uh, share it too far and wide or any of that but um, just internally this is about you feeling good about your efforts about your personal leadership about what it is that you've done um, yeah, I've got the note here, feel good. It's a feel good moon in terms of recognizing your own strength, okay? So that's the full moon on the 18th of January, Scorpio. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time, we're okay. Right, so all month, We've got Venus in retrograde, and that's happening for you in your first house. Oh, this is all about you. This is amazing. Right, this is huge. Yes, Sagittarius, this is a big time. Can we get it a little bit more narrow rather than just looking at your beliefs around love and relationships? Can we get this a little bit finer? Well, I think we can because we can look at the Lord of your first house, which is Jupiter, and he is transiting third house Aquarius. So yes, you're gonna be reviewing everything about love and relationships, but you're also gonna be reviewing specifically how courageous you are when it comes to love. Do you have courage? Do you have courage to be loving? Do you have courage to be the first one to offer love? Or do you need to wait? Or do you need to test somebody? 
or you know um, or do you just go in there and you know <laughs> how, where, where are you on this spectrum and it's not about you know um, doing anything this is about becoming aware this is about reviewing this is about looking okay Venus is in retrograde so we are just looking at all this and this is a good time to look at some of these things now Mercury will be in retrograde from the 15th of January in your second house so this is going to be a great time to review your money your savings uh, any administrative matters to do with money home family if you've got bills piling up if you've got any administrative tasks that have been piling up that you haven't done this is really the time to get that done now new moon is happening on the 3rd of January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada in your first house so you can wish for something to do with love um, which is quite beautiful and I've got the note here example you can wish that my heart be recalibrated to accept and to give more love you know maybe you want your heart expanded um, at this time on the new moon 3rd January this would be a good time to wish for that there's a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra this is happening in your eighth house so this is a beautiful soft dreamy tender full moon and it's happening in a very hidden place because we've got Cancer which is hidden and we've got Scorpio which is hidden so we're very hidden here so this is a beautiful quiet serene private full moon so this could be lovely and dreamy great for meditation great for artists great for reflecting um, but in a very private and personal way and very much to be doing that on your own as well this is quite beautiful it's quite a sacred sort of holy it's, it's lovely lovely full moon energy there for you Sagittarius so thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining now all month we've got Venus in retrograde in your 12th house so for everybody this is going to be about reviewing relationships but can we narrow this down a little bit more well I think we can because we can look at the Lord of the 12th house which is Jupiter and that's transiting your second house Aquarius so this is about reviewing love and romance with your partner but also with your family and you're also looking at who are your family you know what is this concept of family and can you create your own family you know yes you had your family of origin that you were born into but as we go forward in life we create our own families don't we we you know create marriages we create workplaces we create careers and we create you know new friend groups and new places where where we have people whom we consider to be family so that's something definitely that you can be reviewing across this month now mercury will be retrograde from 15th january in your first house so this is a great time to get on top of any administrative matters and to be clutter clearing as well so i know you're in sadi sati i know this is a tough time for many of you out there but you're doing amazing just keep going and we've just got one more year <laughs> okay there's just one more year left of saturn in capricorn and you know if you are doing good you really should feel fantastic I know I say this to you often Capricorn but you're doing amazing you're the heroes of the zodiac right now and just keep going and know that you just have one more year to clear once you've done this year that's it all right so we've got a new moon happening 3rd January and that's especially for my Capricorn moon people okay that's the Sadi Sati people right now new moon if you're Capricorn ascendant you're doing amazing as well <laughs> don't think I'm not saying you're amazing you're very amazing but it's particularly for the moon people right because you know Saturn on the moon now new moon is happening for everybody on the 3rd of January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra that's happening in your 12th house so wish for something this is cool yes this is beautiful this is a new moon 12th house I've got the note here wish for something from your private fantasy life to be made real this year 
yes what do you fantasize about and do you want it to be real and would you like that to be made real this year well Capricorn this could be your year so wish for something from your fantasy life to be made real how lucky are you nobody else is getting that this time so that's something special so do wish for that uh, Capricorn and we've got a full moon happening 18th January in Cancer Pushya Nakshatra that's happening for you in your seventh house so this is a time to reflect on your marriage on your partnerships on your public okay um, on your audience if you're a social media apologies Capricorn the memory card filled up so um, I was saying yeah time to reflect on your marriage your partnerships your public your audience if you're on social media okay uh, also your business so something might be coming to a close you're going to see a cycle complete there on the full moon 18th January in one of these areas okay marriage business your public uh, even your social media so Capricorn you got a lot to keep you busy there and I'm wishing you well and we are now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining now all month Venus is in retrograde in your 11th house so this is a time to review what you really believe about relationships love and relationships now that's actually quite a big area so can we narrow it down yes we can so we can look at the Lord of your 11th house which is Jupiter and Jupiter is transiting your first house Aquarius so this is about reviewing what you dream of in your love life I do believe and I mean we could also see this as your relationship with yourself as well you know do you love yourself um, this can be self and other okay so you can look at both you can look at what you dream of in your love life but you can also look at your relationship with yourself do you really love yourself you know because when we don't love ourselves we tend to attract in people who reflect that as well also sometimes if somebody does love us but we don't love ourselves we will be suspicious of that person because we'll be like well well why do you love me I don't even love me do you know what I mean like it can be um, yeah that can be a thing right so so that is something to be looking at okay what is your relationship like with yourself there's also the thing of asking yourself you know how is what you wish for now in love in your relationships different to what you would have wished for 10 years ago you can also look at this in terms of how have I grown and changed you know 10 years ago I, was, I wanted very different relationships to what I want now and that's brilliant because that shows that you're growing it also does show that you know that there can have been breakups um, in that time because certain relationships can't make the transition with you okay and that, that's a fact of life there are some people that that can't take the journey you know and um, that's how that is and you can be reflecting on some of these things at this time and Mercury will be retrograde from 15 January onwards in your 12th house this is a great time to get on top of any bills um, to you know really take a look at your expenses okay and be logical and definitely take a look at your credit card and definitely take a look at oh my god you know I should have stopped that subscription ages ago or um, you know yeah if you're a member of a gym but you haven't been there for three months you know you got to get real and you got to cancel that thing right so this is the month to do that to really look at your expenses and to sort out and perhaps cancel any unnecessary expenses now, there's a new moon happening 3rd January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra this is happening in your 11th house so this is a time to wish to grow your social networks this year this is a great time if you're a business person uh, or if you have social media network or something like that this is also a time to wish for the ability to take in more opportunities this year if you can wish for you know uh, to be able to take in more I actually had a session with a psychic this was like I can't remember a couple of years ago this is a while ago 
and she was brilliant she said to me you should just like look up every now and then and say bring me the good stuff I thought, yeah, I love that. That's a fantastic affirmation. Bring me the good stuff. So that could be something you do on the new moon on 3rd January. And then in the full moon, we have a full moon, 18th January, Cancer, Pushya, Nakshatra. That's happening for you in your sixth house. So this is a time to reflect on your business if you're self-employed or whatever career you do. This is a good time to look at how you serve, how you build excellence into your work, into what it is that you do. Ideally, you can think about and contemplate and look at how you gradually and incrementally improve your work or your service or your products at this time. So Aquarius, it's looking like a, a good start to the year for you. And thank you so much for tuning in. We are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now all month we've got Venus retrograde in your 10th house. So this is a time to reflect on what you really believe about love and relationships. But can we be a little bit more specific? Yes, we can. So we can take a look at the Lord of that 10th house of yours, which is Jupiter. And Jupiter is transiting 12th house Aquarius. So this is about reviewing what you dream of for your career, okay? What would you absolutely love to do? If money were no object, if you had all the time in the world, if you had all the skills, if you had whatever you think you need for that career, if you think you need qualifications or whatever it is, what would you absolutely love to do? What would that be? This is a good time to be thinking about that. Um, you know, can this be your career? So isn't that interesting? Because we've got Venus retrograding in your 10th house of career. So, and then, you know, Lord of the house is in the 12th, which is fantasy, right? What would your dream career be? Okay, you get to fantasize about career, about, you know, where you see yourself, where you would love to see yourself, where you think you would thrive, what you'd love to have a go at. This would be a good time to think about that. Now we've got Mercury retrograde from 15 January in your 11th house. So this is a great time to brush up on your CV. It's a great time to be getting on top of any administrative matters to do with your career or with money as well, okay? Now we've got a new moon happening 3rd January in Sagittarius Purva Ashada Nakshatra in your 11th house. This is a great time to set an intention to make this year one of career success okay this year you want to reach for the stars all right uh, and once you've set this intention once you've visualized that incredible career and maybe you've visualized yourself doing that role or doing that job or whatever it is visualize it and then let it go and don't think about it just let it out of your mind have a few deep moments of thought about it and really embodying it and feeling it. And another friend of mine, he told me that you should uh, dress for the job that you want to have. I thought that was pretty cool. So he used to want to be a creative director in advertising. So he would start dressing like one, you know, and um, there isn't particularly a uniform. I mean, maybe they wear a lot of black. I don't know. But yeah, he, he used to want to be a creative director. So he was like, I better start dressing like one. And he did. He started kind of yeah, dressing more like, and this was when we were in our 20s, you know, we were really young. But he started kind of trying to dress like, you know, the people in their 40s and 50s who were at that level. And he was doing that then. And I just thought that was a really cool technique, a kind of cool technique to manifest that dream career. So that's a little something there. Uh, full moon. We have full moon, 18th January, in Cancer, Pushya, Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your fifth house. This is a great time for you to reflect on your creativity, your creative skills, your passion projects, your art, you know, what it is that you want to express, what it is that you would want to leave behind for the world. This is also a great time to take a look at your relationship with your children. Okay, so feel the fullness of what you have. Feel the fullness of your creative skills that you know that you have projects that you want to do. Doesn't matter that they're not done. Okay, don't worry about that. Just feel good that 
I have such an abundance of things I want to do. You'd be amazed how many people actually come, you know, for reading. And look, we've all been in situations like this. I know this situation really well, where you're just like, I have no idea what I want to do. You know, um, that's that's a thing, right? So, but if you've got lots of things that you want to do, this is a good full moon to feel good about that, to feel good about how many things you want to do and how many things excite you. Um, this is also a great time to be super grateful for your children, okay? To spend time with them and to just love them, love them exactly where they are, the way they are, and that you have them. You know, because again, I get a lot of people come to me for readings who would love to have children, but for various reasons they can't. And they want to know from their chart, you know, that will I ever do this? And uh, very often I'm able to see that, well, yeah, it, it is possible. Um, don't lose hope because, you know, there are always miracles. And, you know, I've seen so many cases where people who thought they couldn't have kids, they do end up having kids and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you have children, be enormously grateful for them. So Pisces, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to close out the video here. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stick around on the channel. There's lots to come this year. I'm really excited to be putting together new content, new materials for you. So stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Music